Hey, welcome to our Principles of Macroeconomics. Quick lesson on some personal finance basics. Uh, personal finance, this is stuff that actually is an educated person who's going to be earning money. Um, this is not a thing that you should think of once and then discard. This is something you should think of constantly. Um, every month you should be thinking about what you're doing for personal finance. Um, are you doing the right things? There's all sorts of good tips, best practices. I can't possibly cover them all. So I'm gonna, t I'm gonna give you a very brief overview of a few points and then we're gonna discuss a little bit about the power of compound interest and saving early. And I'm gonna show you some simulations that those who are taking my class, you're going to be asked to be doing some homework assignments that are similar to these simulations. So the quick tips that I recommend, first of all, um, for most, you know, if you're taking this and you're in college, as soon as you possibly can, save three to six months expenses, and I say this, that are liquid. Um, don't go buy a new car, don't go buy expensive stuff. I mean, you treat yourself a little bit, but do your best to have money in an account. Um, this is going to be especially true if you are in any sort of a sensitive type of a job where a boss might ask you to do something unethical and or illegal, um, which for most of you it won't happen, but there are accountants and other business professionals who've gone to jail for cooking the books. Um, if a boss asks you to do this, you need to leave the job and you want to have money available where you can do that. It's not a good option, but ruining your career um, and spending time in prison is far, far worse. And that might sound dramatic, um, and maybe it is a bit too dramatic, but there are people who this happens to. And even if this crazy scenario, if you think, oh, that just sounds ridiculously crazy, people do lose jobs from time to time. Three to six months expenses just gives you a huge life cushion should something happen. Um, but especially if you're going to get a job that's at all, you could see somebody unethical asking you to do something illegal. Um, you want this, I would say within your first two years in the workforce, do your best to have three to, three to six months expenses saved, and that should be liquid. Uh, two, you should be saving for retirement as well, but playing the market doesn't work as well as tracking funds. I mean, we all hear stories of people who can get rich by playing the market, but a lot, it's very tough to beat the market with fees. And in the long term, more it's usually just better to put your money in a tracking fund. There's, you know, there there have been news stories, right, where uh, John Stossel, for example, threw darts at a board and just bought the stocks that the dark, darts randomly hit, and, and he beat the he beat the financial experts, right? Like having a monkey pick stocks has beaten financial experts. Um, Playing the market doesn't work as well as just buying a tracking fund and holding things in there. Now, can the very best people perhaps eke out a tiny little gain by um, over the market by playing the market a little bit? Sure, but that's the very best. And I don't care what kind of ego you have. If you're watching this video, you're probably not the very best at this point. And if you get to be the very best, that's fantastic. You know, you can ignore this, but. Um, for the most part, everybody watching this video, uh, good advice would be don't try to play the market. Find a low cost fund that tracks um, like the S&P 500 or a huge range of stocks and just put your money in and then don't think about it. Three, avoid credit card debt. Um, high interest rates on credit card debt are insane. Do whatever you can to avoid that debt. And then the fourth one is save early into retirement funds because the power of compound interest is absolutely enormous. Um, so I'm gonna do a couple Excel files. For those who get into finance classes um, later, you will do a whole lot more using Excel to find out like how much you might need to save to reach a certain target. Um, we're just gonna show a couple simulations of how compound interest can be really valuable. So let's, uh, we're gonna, just, uh, we've got an Excel book started up, and let's say, um, take a person who graduates and their age is 22. Let me expand the screen a little bit here. So a person who graduates, age is 22. And let's see, let's go to, we're gonna keep adding a year. So the 22 and Okay, 
I mean, the, it goes to 91, right? But um, so a, a simple Excel spreadsheet amount um, saved that year for the second column. Interest rate and total total savings. So let's say you start with zero before that. Um, you get a job, you decide to save two thousand dollars that year. It's not that much, but um, now we're going to simplify. In theory, if you're saving two thousand dollars in a year, right? You're you're splitting this up month by month. You're earning some interest on the money you put in right away, you're earning much less interest over the course of a year on the money you put in at the end, plus it's a stock market, so there's going to be ups and downs. We're going to simplify and let's just say you're in a 5% interest rate after inflation. So 5% interest rate after inflation. Well, what would be your total savings then? Well, it's your initial amount plus the 2,000 times the interest you earned, right? So it's 5% on 2,000, which is 100, plus the uh, $100 plus the 2,000 you had in, that's what you'd have at 5%. 5% is a relatively reasonable rate to think about above and beyond the inflation rate. In fact, the stock market's actually been higher than that uh, over the years. Um, say you, you do 2,000, every year until you're 30. So it's nine years or through your 30th birthday. And let's say you get a 5% interest rate each year. Well, what's your total savings? We need to actually do a slightly different formula for year two, because in year two, we have the total savings from year one plus the new savings. And now we're, we're assuming we're putting this $2,000 away basically at the very first day of the year. And then what do we have at the very last day of the year is kind of how we're working this. So we have the 2100 plus the 2000, um, plus we have the interest rate that we're earning on the 2100, the 2100 plus the 2000 times our interest rate. And now we're up to 4305, right? You know, it's just kind of interesting. Um, if you think about this, right, we earned, we had 2000 in year one and 2000 in year two. At 5% of $4,000, you might say, oh, that's 5% uh, of $4,000. We're going to earn $200 in interest that year. But actually, we also earned interest on that extra 100 we earned in year one. So we didn't earn 200. We earned 205, right? 305 minus 100. We earned an extra $5. That extra $5 is the result of what we call compound interest. So we're not only earning interest on the money we're putting away each year, but we're earning interest on the interest. And the power of compound interest is pretty enormous. And with compound interest, it really is incredibly valuable to save early. Um, you start to see this. So now, once we have this in, we have this formula right, we can actually just copy and paste, and we can see what we'd have at the age of 30. So 2,000 a year by age 30. Uh, we have 23,156, which is kind of interesting. How much have we put away here? We put away 18,000, right? That's the amount we put away. We earned an extra $5,156 in interest earnings over those nine years. What, if we carry on this, without, th without um, what I'm going to ask my class to do, um, and I mean, this will sound cheesy, but take out a sheet of paper. Imagine that we're going to do this till age 65. We're going to put away 2,000 a year, and we're going to earn the same 5% per year, which is unrealistic, but it's not out of the realm of possibility, because some years you might earn a slightly negative rate, some, earn, some years you'll earn a positive rate, but if you're investing in a low-cost stock fund, this is a perfectly reasonable rate of return to think over the long term that you might get. 65, how much do you think you'll have? So take a moment and just write down the number, just so you have it. Uh, how much money do you think you'll have at age 65? You can pause it if you want. I'm going to resume. So let's go and see at age 65, how much would we have? Oops. I went back to the beginning here. Oh, 
talking about age 40, we have 64,000 in savings. And I'm gonna create another column, total amount save, or total amount we put away, which just equals um, this number times, and I'm gonna do age minus 21, that'll show how many times we put away the $2,000. So at age 40, we have $64,000 in savings. We've only saved, we've only put away 38,000. But now the money's really gonna start to take off a little bit more because we're actually gonna earn more in interest income than we're putting away each year. Because of, once again, the power of compound interest. We've been earning interest on the interest year after year. Um, so by the time we get to age 50, we have 130,000. By the time we get to age 60, it's 239,000. 65, $317,000. That's by putting away 88,000 in savings. Now, 2,000 is not probably a recommended amount. A lot of employers, if you put away 5%, they'll match 5%. So let's start to think a little bit more realistically on how much you might be putting away. Why don't we say you're putting away 5% and the employer's putting away 5% and you earn 50,000 in a year. So that means 10% of 50,000, you're putting away 5,000. And let's assume you're gonna keep that up, but you're also gonna get raises and we'll say your raises amount to 5% per year. So we gotta go to the previous year's amount saved and then times 1.05. How much could you have here at age 65? This number is starting to look pretty impressive, right? And remember, 5% is a good rate of return after adjusting for inflation. Okay, I wanna try something different now, just to show you another thing why it's pretty powerful to save early. Let's go back to where you're just saving $5,000 every single year, year in and year out, instead of keeping increasing. Um, at age 65 at a 5% interest rate. And 5% interest rate, remember, this is pretty reasonable even after inflation. So that'd be like having 800,000 in today's dollars um, at age 65. There's a lot of power in saving early. Um, if you save age 22 to 30, and then you stop saving, you still have $319,000 at age 65. What happens if you don't start until age 30? Well, if you start at age 30 and you did nine years, just like we did 22 to 30. Remember we had like 340,000 last time? Now we only have 216. The same amount saved in nominal terms, $5,000 a year for nine years but quite a bit less in total savings. Let's say we put away an extra 25,000, 5,000 a year, another five years, we're still below the amount we'd had if we'd saved 5,000 a year. How much do we have to put away? Um, looks like we have to put away, instead of nine years from age 22 to 30, from age 30, we would have to save until age 45, that's actually 16 years, just to get to the same amount. And this amount, this, this difference will be pretty drastically different. Actually, if the interest rates are higher, it's a more pronounced difference. Like if you could earn a 10% interest rate a year, you're, it's such an enormous advantage to start at age 22 versus starting at a later 